everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Gabe Ramos, and today we are demoing all the new features in the new Enterprise One 91 user interface with our presenters Andy Klee and Lee Dutton. Before we get started, I would like to discuss asking questions at the end of the demo. There's a Q&A panel on your right in the um, GoToWebinar control panel. Please enter all of your questions in there. Andy, Lee, and myself will be able to read the questions at the end and address them. And then there's also a chat panel. Please use the chat panel to communicate with me if you have any audio issues or any connection issues, and, and I'll be able to get you going while Andy and Lee are doing the presentation. Also, we're recording this webcast, and we'll distribute a link to view the recording within a link from today. Now I'd like to introduce Andy Klee. As many of you know, Andy is president of JDE Tips and has over 20 years of ERP consulting experience. An excellent way to describe Andy is to point out his passion for learning. Andy has applied this passion to everything JDE Tips, and we're happy that you've joined us for the presentation today. Okay, Andy, over to you. Thanks, Gabe. Well, you basically introduced me. I don't have a lot to add. Um, as many of you know, I've been active in the JDE space for almost 25 years, and uh, I'm very excited about what we're doing with the 9.1 user interface, both this kind of webcast where we can demo everything. We're also publishing an article by the presenter that we are hearing today. And we'll have that article available in the next few weeks. And that will cover all the features that we is going to show you today. And as Gabe mentioned, we'll be publishing the uh, recording of the webcast. Um, I'd now like to introduce Lee Delton, who is our main uh, 9 1 user interface and common foundation consultant. Lee is a very experienced JDE financials consultant, and um, she is just going to do a great job today. Don't worry about taking notes. There's a ton of information, but you will have a chance to listen to the recording. So just watch and learn as much as you can. Now, over to Lee. Welcome, everybody, to the 9-1 user interface presentation. And today I'm going to be giving an overview of the new look and feel of the 9-1 interface, including the new home page and the new HTML pages feature, a new taskbar called the carousel, open applications for quick toggling between applications, um, the favorites folder and several updates to the favorites feature, recent reports, which now gives users a quick way to access their reports, menu breadcrumbs, which is a new navigation tool, the new look for applications in the application toolbar, updates to the Visual Assist feature, how to display field de details through hover forms, a new way to speed up data entry called auto-suggest, some new dynamic grid features that make it more Excel-like, a quick new way to access form and row exits, and a new flexible query feature which is available within each application. This presentation covers new UI features for Tools 9.1 up through Update 2. It's called 9.1.2 and Applications 9.1. Update 2 is not on our demo system, so I'll be showing PowerPoint slides of those features. And if you're on Applications 9.0, you can upgrade to Tools 9.1. Most of the new UI features are there, just uh, the hover forms and auto-suggest are missing. So I'm going to jump over into J.D. Edwards. And this is the home page for J.D. Edwards. You'll notice a modernized um, look. The application level is displayed prominently in the center of the screen. And I'm going to hide this for right now. Notice that the left navigation menu is no longer here. It's been replaced with 
a tool called the Navigator, where you can drill down into your application um, through these drill down menus. And also up here in the up, uh, upper menu, you can look at open applications, recent reports, and favorites. And I'll go into each of these, um, the new features of each of these in a moment. And then up here in the upper right is the roles drop down. So if a user has more than one role, they can switch between roles. Some personalization options, and also it displays the environment over, over here. I'd like to now show you the new Pages feature, and these are these tabs up here at the top. Um, these are tabs where you can um, uh, use HTML to create pages relevant to your company. And the Business Flow feature here is, um, is a great new time saver that's delivered with the tools. Um, you, a system administrator can create uh, different business flows for each of your common business processes. And then a user can then access the different applications quickly by just clicking on the boxes. Six predefined business flows are delivered with Tools 9.1. Um, and then other HTML pages that can be added up here by the system administrator include product branding, BI analytics, social message boards, and external URLs like the company website. Um, this pages bar can be collapsed with, uh, by clicking on this arrow up in the right-hand corner, and then it can be reopened. And also, based on a user's preference, they can drag these tabs around, um, and then those changes are um, saved automatically in the system for future sessions. So once they drag, a user drags things to their preferences, they don't have to worry about it again. Now I'd like to show you a new taskbar feature called the carousel. And the carousel has um, three sets of tabs, open applications, recent reports, and favorites tabs. And within the favorites tabs, you can click on a, a, a folder and it will open a new tab and display the contents. So this is the monthly folder, and then I had already opened the daily folder. Um, and then I can close this folder by clicking on the um, X to the right of the name. The same objects that are uh, viewed in these tabs can also be viewed up um, in this top menu bar. And some users prefer to use this top menu bar instead of the carousel. And then you can just hide it if you don't want, want to uh, use it that way. The carousel can be anchored um, on any side of the screen. I'm just clicking on it and dragging. So it's very easy to move around and just based on uh, what works best for a user. And when the carousel is at the top or bottom of the screen, you'll notice that um, the objects are in a graphical format called tiles. And then if you drag it over to the left or right side of the screen, it's changed into um, a text-based list mode. Okay, so I'm going to move back down to the bottom because it's easier to show this um, in the bottom carousel. You can drag tiles to the left and right just by clicking quickly and, and moving. And this is useful if you have more tiles than can fit on the screen. And then also within here, I'm going to go into the Favorites folder. Um, you can drag tiles around based on your preference, and those changes are saved automatically for future sessions. And then the carousel tab here can be um, hidden by clicking on these double arrow, and also you can hide the carousel itself by clicking on this light blue bar, and then reopen just by re-clicking on it. Within um, the, each of these tabs, you can hover over any one of these tiles and see details. So I'm hovering over an application. I'm seeing the application ID and so forth for the application. If I hover over a folder, it shows you the contents of the folder. And also to, to see information quickly, if you hover over the text at the bottom of the tile and click on it, 
it will rotate through different information and you just keep clicking it rotates so it shows the program or application ID and then it shows the screen ID and if you click again it shows the um, application description um, so just whatever information works best for you And so now I'd like to talk about open applications. And in here, once you open up applications, everything will be listed here. And then you can quickly jump between your open applications just by clicking on the tiles. And there's also a home page tile included so that you can go back here and, and get into your pages tabs if you want to go there. The next tab I'd like to show you is the favorites tab. And this defines all your user-defined favorites. And within the favorites tab, there's a manage favorites um, tile that you can click to access the manage favorites window. And um, just to mention a, a new addition with Tools 9.1 is um, in addition to being able to create custom folders and also add applications to your favorites, you can now add um, menu application folders or, or what they call task folders to your um, favorites. So here I've added the AP Daily Processing folder. And if I open that up, then I can see all of the um, menu options for the AP Daily Processing. The same thing that you would see in Navigator if you drilled down into AP and went into the Daily Processing menu from that Navigator. So that's a, a great new way to um, set up favorites with everything you need so that you can basically just use that as your navigation. And um, if you notice, AP Daily Processing is listed in the man Manage Favorites, but it's not listed down here in the Favorites tab. That is something that's added in uh, Update 2. So that'll be there when you get to Update 2. So Favorites can be added through Navigator by drilling down into your application. I'm going to drill down into Address Book and add the Address Book Revisions. So I'm going to go into Daily Processing and then right click on Address Book Revisions and it pops up a window um, with the option to add to favorites. So I'm going to click on that and it pops up the window and I can change the description here and then I'm going to click Create Favorites and it displays immediately down in the carousel. And what I'd like to show you next, I want to go into the um, PowerPoint to so, show you some new um, features in Update 2. So in addition to being able to add favorites through Navigator, you can also add favorites through applications. And you just, um, if you're in an application and you decide to add it, you can just drop down the Tools menu, and there's a new Add to Favorites option in there. And then some other things I'd like to talk about the carousel um, that are new in Update 2 is that you can now drag applications into an open user-defined custom folder from within the carousel. So you don't have to go into the Manage Favorites menu in order to um, set up your how you want your favorites to look. And in addition to being able to drag applications, you can also drag entire menus up and down so that let's say you are always in your favorites menu and you want to drag that to the very top, you can do that. And, and all of these changes will be saved automatically for future sessions. And um, the, the recent reports tab isn't new to update to, but in our demo environment, we're not able to run reports. So I wanted to show you an example of how the recent reports tab would look with um, with reports already created in here. And notice that there's a blue color um, corner in here, and that indicates status. So the blue is um, for in queue. The green means that it's been completed. And red indicates that there was an error. You can hover over any one of these tiles and see information. And then the new. Um, feature here that's really nice for users is that you can click on any one of these tiles and, and the PDF will open up directly. So you don't have to go and 
drill down into view job status to, to be able to access your reports. So the next feature, and this is uh, um, with update two, is a feature called menu breadcrumbs. And what this lets you do is um, open up an application and then be able to open up um, other menu options that are on any one of these uh, sub-menus here. So I'm showing an example where I'm opening up address book revisions. And when I do that, the application pops up. And then up here below this top menu options that we've already talked about is a list of menu breadcrumbs. So here's the main enterprise one, foundation systems, address book daily processing, address book revisions. So it's the same flow that we went through here. And once you have these menu breadcrumbs open, then if you wanted to go into another option, let's say within daily processing for address book, you can click on one of these breadcrumbs, and it opens up the related menus below it. And then you can drill down and open up another application. So it's a convenient way to get uh, around the system once you open up one application within that system. OK, so I'd like to go back over. into J.D. Edwards and open up standard voucher entry to talk about the application. And you'll notice that there's a new look and feel to the application. It's a lot more modern looking. The color, font, banner, and tabs have all been updated. And also, the menu toolbar up here is smaller. The text below each of the buttons doesn't um, display anymore. But if you hover over any one of the buttons, it um, describes it, and it also gives you the hotkey for that button. And I'd also like to show from within here the Visual Assist update. Now when you click on your magnifying glass, your vis Visual Assist button, instead of opening up the, the Visual Assist window in a separate window, it now opens it up as a pop-up on the screen. And also, notice you can drag this around if it's um, covering over something. You can drag it around um, to be able to see your information. So now I'd like to show you hover forms. And I'm going to go into the item master, show you that. And hover forms is not available in all fields. but if you see a field with an orange dot in the left corner, that means that you can access additional detailed information about that value. So if you hover over the dot, it will open up um, a corner. For some reason, it's not showing the corner option. Let me click on it again. Sorry. It will open up a corner image. And something's not right, working right with it. But it, it pops up. Normally, it will stay. It pops up. Um, the hover form, and you can have more than one tab in that hover form um, and, and click through the tabs to see the different information. And another field that has the um, hover form is any address book number in the system, whether that's shipped to, sold to, um, whatever address book it is, number it is within this, any system. Also, I'd like to show you the auto-suggest feature from within Item Master. Here it uh, is a new fa fast way to find out the information about an item, to pull in an item. So instead of typing an item number into the item number field, now you can type the item description. So I'm going to type BIK. And then notice this blue arrow displays, and it's the auto-suggest arrow. When I click on this, it pops up a window showing me um, different possible items that, uh, that start with BIK. And once you find your item, you can keep typing additional characters, um, but once you find your item, you just click on it to select and pull it back in. Next thing I'd like to show is uh, some nice updates to the dynamic grid um, feature and that make it more Excel-like. And in addition to being able to resize columns or move columns around, reposition them by dragging on them and moving to another position. You can now hide 
or unhide columns. So let's say I want to hide a couple of category codes that I'm not using. In the column header section, if you right click, you can select hide. And then I'm going to get rid of a few of these, right clicking on each. And then if you decide to unhide some of the columns, if you right click, you can select unhide. And it shows you all of the columns that are hidden. And then you can select one or more columns to redisplay and click OK. In addition to that, there's a way to now freeze. I'm going to unfreeze it just to show you. There's a way to now freeze columns. Um, so let's say I want to freeze the item number in the description column. And this is very uh, the same thing you see in Excel if you've worked with this feature in Excel. So now these two columns are frozen, and if I scroll to the right, I can keep those two columns static and see additional information in this um, grid. And the freeze feature is also useful for data entry. Um, it speeds up data entry by letting you specify an auto return column in your data entry screen so that as you're typing each row of information, as you get to the last row um, and tab, it moves you directly to the next row. First column of the next row, so you're not having to press Enter. Once you make changes, you can now quickly save those changes um, with the Save Grid Format icon. And this doesn't display until you make some kind of change. So I've made changes on this uh, format name of line type. So I'm going to click Save. If I had wanted to start from scratch, I'm going to select Show All Columns. And then let's say I want to hide these two columns and freeze right here. Um, if I now want to save a new format name, I can click this Save icon and call it Item Description or whatever you want to call it, and click OK. So it's a lot faster way to um, save grid formats. And I'd like to go back into um, oops, voucher entry, standard voucher entry, to show the new row and form exit feature. In addition to being able to access form exits through the drop downs at the top, now you can also right click in the header area of your application, and you'll see the form exits. And then I'm going to um, do a find to show the grid. You can open up row exits from within the grid. For some reason, it's not moving very quickly. Um, so let me go back and show another feature. Oh, no, it's locked up. Sorry. While that's um, processing, I wanted to mention the last thing that I'm going to be talking about, which is the query feature over in this upper right-hand corner. And um, query is a new tool that provides on-screen, user-friendly, and flexible way for users to retrieve specific records. It's really empowering for the user. Um, they can create as many queries as they want. and it um, provides more flexibility than using the grid, um, the QBE line, and the filters, um, because you can um, select on any combination of fields. Um, um, and Lee, well, why don't we go over some of the questions while we're wait, waiting for the system to come back? Is that OK? Yeah, and you know what? I'm going to sign out and get back in. I think, that, I think at this point, that's going to be faster. So that sounds great. OK. Um, I'll just wait for you to get back. Oh, okay. It looked like it was going to hang out there for a while. Yeah. Let me just see if it comes up really fast, because it may. Oh. No, okay, let's talk about features. I mean, to, um, answer questions, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, some of these... I don't think we know, but we can find out, and we'll get back to everyone with the answers. So the first one is, 
can the CNC administrator lock the carousel features so that end users, for example, could only access the open applications but not the other features of the carousel? I haven't heard of that, but definitely I'll look into it and we can get back to you. I haven't heard of that yeah. um, option. Okay. Here's another one. Um, can the carousel tile names be updated to something more friendly than P4311, for example? Also, can the tile images be customized? Um, the tile images can, the, the size of them can be changed through personalizations. If you go to drop down into personalizations and then preferences, you can, um, right now the tiles are large and you can turn that off and click save and close. And now the tiles are smaller. So those are the two options for changing how they look. And then um, regarding finding additional information or seeing additional information, I'm going to go reopen the large tiles. It's easier to see. Um, you can click through the text at the bottom of the tile. So if you wanted to see a description, that might be more useful for someone. It just doesn't show the whole description. But um, that's probably more likely what a user would have. And then um, you can hover over, they could hover over a tile to get the full description of that application. Okay, uh, Lee, why don't you go ahead and finish up the demo, then we'll come back to questions in a bit. Okay, great. Um, so going back to row exits, if you hover over, select one of these rows and do a right click, it shows the row exits and that's specific for this particular row that you've right clicked on. Um, and so that's, a, that's probably something that's going to be very popular with your users. And also, within both the form exit and the row exit, if you have certain exits that you use all the time, you can drag those up into this favorites section so that you can quickly access the exits. OK, so now I'd like to talk about queries. And the query tools are found over here to the right. And as I mentioned, users can create as, as many queries as they want. So I'm going to open it up by clicking on the Query button. And now let's say that I want to run a report of PVs that are open or uh, greater than $100, let's say. So I um, click on the plus signs next to the fields that display once you open this query management. Once I select those items, then I can go in, and there's several different operands. You can have between and in list, so there's a lot of flexibility in here that you don't have available in the QBE line. So I'm going to say open amount is greater than 100, and then doc type is equal PV. And um, you can also set a particular query as a default so that every time, or the user can set it up, so that every time they access the screen, if they have certain um, data selection criteria they always want to be automatically run, then that query can run automatically and they'll just see the data that they want to see. And that can also include um, narrowing it down by user ID. Um, and then um, the save options are up here. And so I'm going to come out of here. And that concludes the presentation. Um, Andy, did you want to go through uh, the, the other slides right now? Um, let's go. Yeah, let's go ahead with the rest of the PowerPoint, and then we'll come back and answer the questions. Okay, great. So I just wanted to mention that Lee is teaching a public virtual class four hours a day, February seventh and eighth. It covers all the basics of both the new interface and common foundation. So. Anybody that uh, has some team members that need this kind of training is available those days. And you can register at JDE Tips. Also, uh, many of you probably know that we are developing e-learning that covers 
all the 91 user interface enhancements and it's aimed at end users. So if you're interested in finding out more about our e-learning, you can either email me or you can attend this webcast. You can find it, a link to it on the bottom of the JD Tips homepage. And I believe that's the last slide. Is that correct? Yes. So I'm going to jump back okay. into JDE and um, is there any questions? Yeah, we have a bunch more. Let me uh, get to them here. Uh, this one's from my friend Mike Lee over, over in the UK. Can you customize the hover text at all? Um, like what, what detailed information shows, it sounds like. So let me pull up the hover form. And um, I haven't seen where you can change the tabs or what shows up on there, but I'll definitely look into that. I hadn't heard about that being something that could be modified. But I'll, I'll definitely look into it and get back to you. OK. Um, I think I can answer this one, which is, how do you create or edit the home pages? Uh, is it possible for a super user to modify, or is it a technical job? And this is all documented in the system administrator manual. It's a fairly technical job, so I don't think super users can do it. Would you agree, Lee? Um, yes, yeah, it's pretty technical. Yeah. Okay, do we know which browsers and versions are compatible with 9.1? I don't think we do, but we'll find out and let everyone know. Is there, this is a good question, is there some visual indicator that there are columns in the grid that are hidden? Um, not when you're looking at it in this way. You would have to right-click and do, so let's say I hide well, um, the gross amount. There isn't any indication here that it's hidden. You'd have to do a right-click and click the unhide, and then you would see the list of all of the hidden columns. Right. OK, um, a technical question. Uh, the grid management enhancements, are those stored as before in the F98950? Well, uh, both Lee and I are application consultants, but we'll find out. OK, next yeah. question. I'm not sure exactly what this means. Um, I got a clarification here. Other can you see changes made um, to the interactive version's processing options when configuring a task? I'm not sure what that means. Do you have an idea, Lee? Um, I think we'll just move Yeah, I'm not sure. OK. Um, have you noticed with recent reports that each time you select one, submitted jobs will open a new application. Yes, and that, um, yeah, that's been mentioned by users, and I'm not sure if they're going to make an update to that in the future, but it, it, it slows it down, definitely. OK, these are all great questions, and we're certainly going to pass along uh, the questions, the answers, some impressions that we have to Oracle's development group so that perhaps they can get some of this feedback. Can you attach a document and then view it within a JDE application? I believe that's the old paper clip, and the answer is yes. Uh, Lee, are you aware of any changes to that? No. No, uh-uh. You can still see um, attachments. OK. Uh, here's a question that asks, do we have and can we distribute a white paper for loading 9.1 on a laptop? 
We do have that. We have a great 23-page article. Uh, if you're a subscriber to JD Tips, you can get it at no cost. If you're not, send me an email and I will try to help you out. Did the auto carriage return feature come back when we're doing more heads down data entry? Oh, yeah, let me show that. So I'm going to open up journal entries and click the add button. And I'm going to go in and just fill in something in the header to keep from getting an error. Um, so let's say that I want, oh, I've already set it up. So let's say I have this freeze here, and all I want to enter for this um, particular transaction is the account number, the amount, the subledger, and the subledger type. So I've got it frozen. And if I type an account number, amount, um, subledger type, if I tab again, it takes me down to the next line. And so on. So it's a, it, so it's a nice heads down tool. I think um, your users will find it really useful. Okay, I got a clarification on the previous question. It's more about the applications. We, um, do you think that there are some good enhancements in 9.1 where the processing options on some of the programs have changed? Um, with the applications 9.1, um, yeah. you know, I couldn't, I, 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 can, I can get back to you with the highlights of that. I'd be happy to, to do that. Like yeah, what the we'll send everyone are. a link to what Oracle has published on 9.1. There are quite a few new enhancements. I tend to keep track of the ones in uh, sales order more than the others. And for example, I know that they, they did some significant enhancements for kit processing. But we'll get you guys uh, some documentation links for that. Okay, here's a question. It seems to have been prompted by an article that we published about a year ago, which is, are hierarchical category codes a feature in 9.1? The answer is no. Um, hierarchical category codes, if we have them, it would be like category code 1, you might have, you know, the type of bicycle, and then category code two might be sub-values for each of those types. And if it worked uh, hierarchically, it would only show you the sub-values that related to the value that you selected in, in the first category code. And that is not in the software. However, we do have an article about it and it can be done custom. Okay, to clarify, average book tile has an image showing money. Can that image be changed? Yeah. Oh, Any okay. idea on the images, Lee? No, I've never um, been asked that, so I can find out because they're just graphic images. It might be that it might be possible that there's a central area where people can change images. So I'll. I'll Definitely um, check that out. Yeah. Okay. Um, is the query manager part of the standard software, or is it additional? And I'm 99% sure it is standard. This is yeah. not the same thing as one view reporting. That is charged for separately. We anything to add on that? No, no, no. I, 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 it's standard with the software. I agree with you. Uh, can the queries be secured so that changes cannot be made by other users? You know, you, when people create a query, it's just specific to them. 
and um, so they're they're only going to see their queries. And in addition, a um, system administrator can create queries and make them public to everyone in the company, or um, just make them available to a specific user or specific um, roles. And as far as blocking changes on those public um, queries, I'm not sure about that, whether you can, but I can definitely find out. I know, um, I know where I can find that. OK. Don't worry about writing all these questions down. We will get a copy of these. OK. okay. Um, is, are people able to change the field that the artist suggests searches on? So in other words, can you make artists suggest what kind of field that it doesn't presently work on? I don't, I don't think so. But we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, I don't think so. OK. I'm not familiar with this concept, but the question is, are fine cuts impacted by the new menus? You know fine. anything about that, Lee? Um, how do you fine. spell that? F-I-N-E and then cut, C-U-T-S. Um, I'm it's, not familiar uh, with that. Yeah. We'll um, definitely look okay. into that. Did, did the screens get normalized so that they all have the close X at the top of each application? Have you noticed that? Yes. I, um, you know, there's a few. Um, I was thinking um, data browser. Still, if you go into a data browser tool, you click a, a underline uh, text line said, that says close. Um, but most screens um, in 9.1 do have the standard X for close. OK. Um, next question. If more than one record is selected in the grid, uh, I'm not sure if I'm understanding the question, but it says, if more than one record is selected in the grid and row exits are used, does it cycle through the records? Um, if you use the row exits, so if you select it on these three, and then you use the row exits up here, then it would cycle through all three records. Um, but when you're, when you're doing the right click over here, you're just specifying that one row. OK. Is there a maximum number that you can have of open applications? Um, they recommend not to have more than 10 just because it slows down the system, but you can have, um, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I know there's a limit on that and I can't remember, it was 10 or 20, but it's not recommended that you have more than 10 just because the system's going to get really sluggish. Okay. I don't know if we've tested this one yet, but the question is when you export from a grid with hi hidden columns, do the hidden columns show up in Excel? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure, but definitely I'll test that and, and let you know. Uh, a similar question to one before, is there a limit to the number of applications and folders in the carousel? Um, the favorites folder, I haven't heard of a, of a limit. Um, with recent reports, it's just going to display the last 20 reports. And then there is a limit on open applications, which I'll clarify. Um, I believe it's 20, but I'll, I'll um, make sure I, I add that to the answers. Um, yeah, okay. and, I'll, and I'll verify for favorites. Here's a question about one view reporting uh, I don't know if we know this, but do you, um, I'm going to have to skip this one. Sorry. Um, I'm not sure what this one means. Can you build multiple item master records at once, or do you have to do it one at, at a time? Um, I don't work with... Um 
the item master, so I'm not sure how to answer that. Yeah, I don't. Well, suppose it was like the account master. I don't think anything really has changed with how to add uh, records. Um, yeah, once you once you pull up a grid, you can select a record and and copy it. You know, but you already mm -hmm. have you have to have this first record created, but then you can copy and just change the specific information. Yeah. Uh, here's a question related to queries that you might have already answered. Can a user's queries be made public for other users to run? Yes, a, a user's query or a system administrator's query can be changed to public, or it can be changed just to a specific other user or, or role. Okay. Here's a long one. Let me just read it. In 8011, on a search type form, a user could only hit enter on the search field directly above the grid to kick off the search. If my cursor focused within the other search field above the grid, I have to click on the find button. Is this still the same, or can I hit enter anywhere to start the search? Um, if you're, so let me go into standard voucher entry. If you're entering something in, um, let's say, up here, you need, if you, if you press enter, it's going to do a find. And also, if you enter something into the QBE lines and press enter, it'll do a find. OK. Next one. Uh, so similar to the auto carriage return question, can you press enter instead of tabbing to move to the next line for faster data entry? Um, shoot, I'm locked up in the screen, but I'm, I, I've always just pressed tab to move to the next one. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to press enter, but I, I need to test that and let you know. Okay, we'll find out. Okay, um, I think the answer to this one might be no, but this question is, can I join different files, different tables, to create my own qu qu queries? Uh, and I think the query capability that you see only works on the data that shows in the screen that you are looking at. Is that pretty much correct, Lee? Yes. Yeah, um, when you open up query, it um, displays plus signs by any field that you can select. And so that can, that can include fields up in the header um, and then all along the grid. But that's the only, those are the only fields that you can select on. OK. Uh, here's a question I've never thought about before. What does the hammer and the wrench in the lower right corner of the app icons signify? Hammer and the wrench. Uh, I would say that that was somebody's idea of a tool. So I don't know. I'm not sure either. Um, no. Okay, we um, do all the screens have the expand all function? I'm not sure what that means. Um, or if you're referring to uh, this feature to hide the header and, and be able to see just the grid, um, I'm not sure if all screens. I see it on many screens, but I haven't. Um, paid attention to whether or not it's on all screens. It, you would find it on the Find Browse um, screens. But let's say Item Master, I'm not sure. It doesn't even have an area. So um, it, I, it, I, I would 
safe to say that if there's a header filter area, that there's going to be a way to expand the grid area. But I, I can't guarantee that. It's, okay. It's, it's a standard function, though. Here's another question about the new query function. Do you happen to know if it returns an initial limited number of records, for example, 10, and then you might have to page down and wait for it to return more? Um, yes, it always shows the, the, the first 10 records, and then, and then you can open up all records by clicking the double arrow. But it would, it would show the first 10 that were found in the query. Okay. Okay. Um, could we go back to the PowerPoint to the last slide? Sure. Well, I just want to thank everyone. Thank Lee for doing this demo. We are going to post the uh, the recording that we just made. Don't forget, we have an article coming out in about two weeks that explains all the features of the 9.1 user interface. And we also have e-learning that will be generally available about the same time as this next webcast that you see there. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we will get back to each of you, to everyone, with a list of answers to all of the questions. So have a great day, and thanks again.